8. Russian Rockets In the 20th century, the Soviet Union and the United States were competing in what's known as the space race to be the first to achieve space flight. As the Russians built various nuclear arms and other craft to send astronauts into space, it makes sense that there would be some projects that were later abandoned. Deep in the forests of Siberia sits one of the largest spaceports known as the Baikonur Cosmodrome. It was built in 1955 in southern Kazakhstan and was the location of the first launch of the Sputnik 1 satellite, as well as many other historic missions into space. Even today, various space missions including commercial, scientific and military launches take place at this site, which has led to debris from the rocket launches raining down on the remote hills. During the Soviet era, the USSR worked to recover booster rockets from launches to prevent secrets of their space missions from leaking. Now, pieces of space debris continue to rust in the grasslands of Kazakhstan. With so much space junk littering the landscape, local villagers have found a way to make a living by gathering the fallen scraps of completed and abandoned space missions. In other areas in Russia, more space junk sits abandoned in remote forests, including the Zenith and Molniya, two rockets left over from the space race. The Zenith was a class of rocket launcher built to launch piloted vehicles by the Soyuz, which has been in service for 60 years and made more than 140 flights. There was just one problem. The launcher was made in Ukraine, and when the Soviet Union collapsed, many of the projects were given up and it was abandoned. 7. Stack Rock Fort Off the western coast of Wales, an island sits abandoned in the creepy mist. It dates back to the mid-19th century, when Stack Rock Fort was built there to defend the Royal Naval Dockyard against the invasion of Napoleon's forces. Now, centuries later, visitors claim to hear the cannon fire and the echoing footsteps of the more than 150 soldiers that were once stationed there. After the building was destroyed in 1929, nature tried to overtake it, with overgrown weeds and vegetation engulfing the building and making it uninhabitable. It's a ghostly sight to see Stack Rock Fort lingering in the middle of the water. It also has a haunting beauty that draws photographers to the area, who can't help but be enchanted by the crumbling parapets and ancient stonework that make up the structure. The building was originally built in the mid-1850s with a three-gun tower. At one time, there were 16 guns arming the fort, with each weighing 18 tons. For those who want to brave a trip to the island, the only way to get there is by boat. Once you arrive, there's only one way up, a metal ladder that leads from the craggy outcrop. Over the years, ghost hunters have gone to the island with cameras and special equipment to see if they can find any signs of supernatural life there. Visitors describe an incredible sense of isolation, even though they're only 10 minutes from the mainland. They also heard strange noises that sound like voices coming from the lower levels of the structure, as well as loud bangs and a low rumbling metallic sound that sounds a lot like the large weapons that were originally employed to defend the island. Could the ghosts of the soldiers who served at the island to protect the coast still linger there? Those who have visited Stack Rock Fort believe there's definitely something strange going on. 6. Abandoned Inuit Village If you ever make it to Alaska and get tired of seeing icebergs, whales, and the state's expansive snowy landscape, you might want to head to the coast to catch a glimpse of an eerie abandoned Russian village. The village of Norkin sits on the Russian side of the Bering Strait directly across from Alaska. The village was founded in the 14th century by the Inuit, then later rediscovered by a Russian explorer named Semyon Dezenyov, who came across the village after he was sailing through the rough waters of the Bering Strait in 1648. At the time, the Soviets had a policy of disbanding unpromising villages or small settlements that didn't contribute to the Soviet economy. Under this policy, people from small villages were ordered to abandon their settlements. After Dezenyov came upon the village and revealed its location to the Russians, all 400 residents of Norkin were displaced, leaving the village abandoned. At the time, there were 13 tribes living in the village with a distinct dialect and unique traditions including legends and folk tales. One common tale was that whales would swim ashore and take the most beautiful woman from the village in exchange for the protection of the settlers there. Even today, the abandoned rib bones of massive whales can be seen scattered across the desolate landscape. Still, if you want to visit this desolate place, you can stand on the shoreline of Alaska on a clear sunny day and catch a glimpse of the territory only 50 miles in the distance. 5. The Mysterious Village of Pegrima The history of Pegrima, a Russian ghost town, is almost as elusive as the village itself. Located in the Medvezhugorsk district, Pegrima sits on the bank of Lake Onega. 
Even though not much is known about the village, researchers believe it dates back at least 500 years, and it was an old fishing town before it fell into disrepair. In the 1770s, a chapel was built on a small cape in the village, a structure that's still standing today as a haunting reminder of the once small, isolated population that inhabited the area. Other buildings have survived the elements, including a small community of wooden houses built to house the population. So, what could have caused the tiny village to decline? Most of Bregramer's history is lost, and what little remains is only known through the stories of the locals. But some believe that because of its remote location, there was never enough electricity to sustain its villagers. As the younger generations realized how hard life was in the wilds of Russia, they packed up their belongings and moved away. Without the help of younger, stronger residents, the older villagers were unable to evolve, and Pogrema was eventually abandoned. The village decayed without anyone living there. All religious icons were removed from the chapel after the Russian Revolution, taking Pogrema's identity away from it and leaving it a shell of what it once was. 4. Abandoned Weather Station Russia's Rangel Island may look abandoned from the outside. If you were to take the 2,000-kilometer, 1,200-mile trek along the coast, you'd find the old weather station has been taken over by a group of polar bears. It might seem natural that the bears would take over the remote location. A mysterious phenomenon might have had a hand in helping the bears to settle there. Every nine years, the floating ice moves closer to the shoreline around summertime, and it seems to attract the polar bears who hitch a ride on the ice chunks. Before the bears took Wrangell Island over, the otherwise inaccessible nature reserve on the island was home to creatures of a different nature. Evidence of bones and fossils show that almost 4,000 years ago, woolly mammoths roamed the island. Even though there were no predators there to challenge them, they too struggled to survive with limited food. They evolved, shrinking to half their original size before they disappeared from the island around the same time as humans arrived there. In the early 1800s, stories of the mysterious island circulated through the north with some taking sledge trips across the ice to find the island, but with no luck. It wasn't until 1867 that a whaler named Captain Thomas Long supposedly spotted and landed on Wrangell Island. Later, a weather station was built there, but it was abandoned in 1992, and since then the wind and rain have battered the neglected buildings. Sadly, even though the bears continue on the island, they're still at risk. Around 12 million abandoned fuel barrels were scattered along the Russian coast after being discarded by the Soviet Union. As these barrels continue to wash up along the shores of the island, the waste could threaten the course of nature and the lives of the polar bears. In the waters around the island, humpback whales, seabirds, sea lions, and seals swim every day, putting them at risk too. It will be a massive undertaking to clean up the industrial waste, but it would be an ideal thing to do to save these creatures and help them to continue to thrive. The only way to get onto Wrangell Island is with a special permit given to you by Russian authorities, something that they don't do often. Would you be adventurous enough to visit this station? Let us know in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. 3. Abandoned Suspension Bridge Along the Manawuta River in New Zealand, a ghostly reminder of a once prosperous farming community sits abandoned along a rural road. Suspension wires from the old bridge that once serviced the local flax industry now dangle untethered from the haunting structure. The bridge was one of 15 suspension bridges important that helped transport materials and workers across the river. From 1900 to 1921, the area was a hub of activity, with 30 flax mills that took up an area of 14,500 acres, 5,900 hectares, processing and transporting material throughout the country. The bridge opened in January 1918 and became a complex component of three nearby mills and their farmers' daily operations. Only three years later, the local industry collapsed after the economy changed and a disease ravaged flax plants. As a way to turn his fortunes around, one of the unfortunate local farmers decided to buy shares of land around the bridge so he could assume responsibility for its operation. In the mid-1920s, he decided to operate it as a toll bridge. However, even his business savvy couldn't protect him from the government, who decided to replace the bridge with one they wanted to build. The replacement bridge would not replace the old toll bridge for another three decades. The government retired it before removing the timber deck structures to prevent people from using it, but to this day, the concrete structure and some of its abandoned wires serve as a reminder of more prosperous times for the small village. Two. 
Sanatorium du Basel At first glance, the imposing architecture of the Sanatorium du Basel in Belgium might give you the chills. The hospital opened in 1903 to treat tuberculosis. It was modern for its time, with electricity that came directly from a power plant on site. As the facility grew after the Second World War and another pavilion was built on the property, the population of the sanatorium continued to grow. The facility was huge for over half a century, housing thousands of children and adults and treating countless patients who were often there for over a year before returning home healthy again. Different drugs were developed in the second half of the 20th century, and the number of patients steadily dropped and the sanatorium started to decline. What started out as a facility to help people had a bit of a tragic demise as it fell into decay and was abandoned. Between 2010 and 2013, the site was revamped and it reopened as housing for asylum seekers, mentally ill or violent. Structures suffer as shelters begin to deteriorate from overuse and neglect and as nature tries to overtake buildings. Walking paths become overgrown and the windows and sunscreen shattered. Inside, the rusting bath that were part of the spa once used to combat tuberculosis decayed. With such a loud history, it's allowed strange urban legends to circulate about the facility. Urban explorers who've made the trek to the sanatorium have found traces of blood and strange symbols painted on the walls. Police have even found the belongings of missing people there, but just like the facility itself, any proof of these urban legends remains hidden in the middle of the Belgian forest. 1. French Chateaus France is a country that's rich in art, culture, and history. However, even with its prosperity, there are a number of abandoned castles scattered throughout the French countryside that once belonged to the elite. Many of these were abandoned and destroyed during the French Revolution, but others, including the Chateau de Grand Val, survived the conflict only to be used during World War II. It was a hiding place for factions of the French resistance. Eventually, it was destroyed by Nazi forces and left in ruins. Another infamous castle that's now a shell of its former self belonged to King Richard I, who ruled as King of England. Known as Richard the Lionheart, the king spent his life defending the land he owned in France. Construction of his castle began in 1196, but he earned the scorn of his people by using money from England's treasury and taxes paid by its people to fund his armies and military exploits. That same year, he signed a peace treaty with the King of France for land located in Normandy. A manor known as Andeli was part of that treaty, and under the terms negotiated with the King of France, Richard was supposed to keep the castle unfortified. Seeing that the site of the manor was a strategic position that would help the English gain a position in their Normandy defenses, the king ignored the treaty and built Chateau Gallard on the rock of Andeli. He spared no expense in fortifying the castle, adding dry moats and an inner keep to protect the building. He also used concentric fortifications that gave more protection to his men, and he added what's known as a Mackie collation, which was a floor opening that allowed the person above to drop oil or boiling water on attackers below. The chateau didn't end up being the saving grace for King Richard. In one attack, he received an arrow wound to his shoulder that remained infected and eventually killed him. After he died, his brother, King John of England, wasn't able to defend the Norman territories in France, and the chateau suffered. For an entire year, Chateau Gallard was under siege from French forces, who entered the Seine Valley and took Normandy. Other conflicts over the years battered the castle, until the French eventually took hold of it in 1449. After that, the castle was abandoned, with thieves and bandits using it as a refuge. With no one to care for the chateau, it fell into disrepair and on the orders of King Henry IV, the chateau was demolished in 1599. The remains of the fortress still stand as a historic monument, 85 kilometers, 52 miles to the east of Paris, where visitors can travel the same route King Richard did through the Seine Valley, enjoying the landscape and imagining what life was like for King Richard when he set his sights on what became a historic chateau. Thanks for watching. Which of these abandoned places did you find the strangest? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these. See you next time. Bye.